Scientists are looking at many possible ways to slow down aging. Human aging, it's impossible to avoid, or is it? What if there was a way not just to stop it, but reverse it? We are now finding pieces of the fountain of youth. And now many are revealing that we have more control over this particular aging process than any of us could ever have imagined. This is Elizabeth Blackburn. In 2009, she received the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. She and other scientists have uncovered how we get old and how we can possibly slow down aging. My name is Kimmins and today we will see how we might slow down aging and live longer. This is our third video on how to slow down aging. The videos have been produced in a way that you do not need to watch other videos in order to understand this video. But there will be references, so you might want to check the others out later. Like the following reference here. Queen Shi Huang, my great emperor, we know you want to live forever, but maybe you shouldn't drink mercury. Don't listen to him, it's modern medicine, hocus pocus, it's completely fake to begin with. Isn't it considered traditional medicine? Not yet. Wait, I found a CEO has found a recipe to slow down aging in the future. Okay. It all started in the 1930s. What are the 1930s? Psst, don't interrupt him. An American scientist called Barbara McClintock conducted extensive experiments on DNA. In one of her experiments, she found something weird. If chromosomes are broken into two, they tend to fuse with other chromosomes. So she asked if broken chromosomes do this, why do not all the chromosomes we have fuse with each other? She concluded that the ends of chromosomes must have some form of unique feature which prevents them from fusing with each other. A couple of years later, a scientist named Muller came to the same conclusion and named the end of chromosomes telomeres. When are we talking about aging? Wait a minute, this is important. What no one knew was that right there was a profound discovery just waiting to be revealed. But this didn't happen for years and years. In the meantime, scientists made discoveries in other fields. For the first time, cells could be grown in petri dishes. This helped scientists to study isolated effects in a controlled manner, but there was also something weird here. Cells can normally be grown for a while, but not forever. At some point, cells do not make new cells. In the early 1970s, scientists found another phenomenon which must be related to this. Every time a cell makes a new cell, it loses some DNA at the end. When a cell has made more and more cells, it will lose more and more DNA until it loses the ability to make cells. This phenomenon was called the end replication problem. Every time a cell makes another cell, it has to sacrifice some DNA at the ends. Weird protections at the end of chromosomes called telomeres? Cells stopping making new cells and losing the ends of chromosomes? All the puzzle pieces were there. It only needed one person to connect the dots. Enter Elizabeth Blackburn. Elizabeth Blackburn studied a single cell organism called Tetrahymena thermophilia. This organism might look like a hairy cucumber, but also provided the last piece of the puzzle. While doing experiments, Elizabeth Blackburn uncovered that the ends of DNA of this organism contained the same sequence over and over again. She knew all about the previous discoveries and so she could connect all the dots. She proposed that the end of chromosomes contain repetitive telomeres, which prevent chromosomes from fusing. Since telomeres contain the same sequence over and over again, they can be sacrificed when a cell makes a new cell. Once all telomeres are lost, a cell cannot make new cells, which is one of the explanations why most cells cannot be kept in petri dishes forever. When scientists learned about this discovery, they, together with Elizabeth Blackburn, started to study how telomeres change when we get older. Over the years, more and more studies concluded that telomeres become shorter as we get older. And the loss of telomeres is associated with many age-related diseases. You see, when our cells lose more and more of the telomeres, they become dysregulated and might stop making new cells. Over time, the metabolism of cells change, and together with other factors, this causes them to enter a zombie-like state, as we've discovered in this video. The inactive zombie cells can release molecules into the environment and cause inflammation, and this can contribute towards heart disease, diabetes, autoimmune disease, or infection. More dramatically though, the loss of telomeres takes away the protection of chromosomes and potentially cause cancer. Cancer normally arises after a very long process and telomeres or the loss of telomeres are involved here. Our cells have to stick with us throughout our lives. And this time they are exposed to certain chemicals or radiation and experience damages to the genetic information or DNA. These damages can destroy important genes and the cell might die. However, in some cases, DNA damages can change the features of cells and make them more aggressive. One very dramatic change is when telomeres start to become too short and chromosomes fuse with each other. What did I just do with my hands? Chromosomes are suddenly attached to each other and harmful genes become active. 
This can then further promote the growth and survival of the cell and we get a cancer cell. Cancer cells then in the end often make the telomeres longer again, which helps them to make even more and more cells. And over time the cancer can spread. So it's reasonable to assume that we want to keep our telomeres longer so that they're not too short and all of this doesn't happen. So is there any way to do this? In 2003, scientists wanted to find out how telomeres affect aging. So they divided people into two groups depending on the length of the telomeres in the immune cells. They found that people with longer telomeres live an average of 5 years longer than those with shorter telomeres. And based on this observation, scientists now try to make telomeres longer. There are two ways to do this. Elizabeth Blackburn, the scientist we've seen earlier in this video, discovered a protein called telomerase. Telomerase has the ability to make telomeres longer. We all have telomerase encoded in our genes, but the issue is that telomerase is often not active in the adult body. So scientists now try to reactivate telomerase in order to see if they then can slow down aging. And they've already had first successes. In one study, scientists activated telomerase in mice with very short telomeres. As expected, they found that this reactivation made the telomerase longer. However, it also made the mice more fertile and improved the function of the brain. It seemed like age-related symptoms were reversed. In another study, scientists transferred telomerase as a form of gene therapy into mice. They then activated telomerase in different organs. Astonishingly, it was found that mice which received the therapy lived 41% longer than the control. And also here the treated mice showed improvements in age-related symptoms, including a better coordination and motor activity. And then only a couple of weeks ago, scientists found another way to potentially make telomeres longer. In one study, they were interested in how immune cells work. They found that some immune cells can pack telomeres into small packages and give them to surrounding cells. And this way, immune cells can help each other to keep the telomeres long. This made telomeres 30 times longer compared to telomerase treatments. So here it would be very interesting to see if we can use these packages also in medicine. But of course, since this study is very new, again, only a couple of weeks old, it will take a while until we can find it out. At this point, I also want to say that artificially activating telomerase can also have some risks. If, for example, we make telomeres longer in precancer cells, they might be able to make more cells even faster. So scientists really need to be careful to make safe therapies. But even if it takes a while, we do not wait. We can do something, all of us. As we've seen in previous parts of this series, we can do a lot in order to potentially slow down aging. So here are things you can do in order to possibly keep your telomeres longer. Number one, stress. Stress can impact the length of our telomeres. This trend begins early in our lives and continues as we get older. The idea right now is that chronic stress leads to the release of molecules called glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids then travel through the body, enter cells and cause reactions. The short-term reactions to these stress hormones might be fine, but when it becomes chronic, it changes the activity of our genes and mitochondria. This then causes a cascade of damaging pathways, which in the end shorten telomeres. Scientists studied telomere lengths in different age groups. They found children who have experienced more violence have shorter telomeres. Another study has shown that the mothers of chronically ill children have shorter telomeres than normal. Also here it is assumed that these mothers have to deal with a lot of stress and this might shorten their telomeres. Then also researchers checked the telomeres and stress levels of 58 healthy women. The results show that the immune cells of highly stressed women are 10 years older in respect to the telomere lengths compared to not stressed women. Yeah, these are extremely depressing studies. But there is hope. If a lot of stress can shorten our telomeres, are there any ways to make them longer? More and more studies suggest that the management of stress may have beneficial effects for our telomeres. Mindfulness-based stress reduction has been shown to increase telomerase activity in blood cells. With a higher telomerase activity, we then might make our telomeres longer again, to a certain degree at least. In another study, scientists focused on meditation. Participants were enrolled and they meditated 6 hours per day for 3 months as part of a retreat. It was found that their telomerase activity increased compared to people who didn't meditate. So the conclusion with stress management and meditation is that they have many benefits and they might even make our telomeres longer to a certain degree at least. But we can do even more. And with that, we come to exercise. It has been observed in numerous studies that adults and elderly people have on average longer telomeres in the muscles and immune cells if they do sports. Here it is a bit difficult to tell you what exact sports is the best, but 
As also in previous videos, moderate and vigorous exercise seems to help the most. With moderate exercise, we can include walking stairs, water aerobics or volleyball, and vigorous exercise might include running, cycling or jumping rope. In case your favorite sport is not mentioned here, these are just some examples. It is important though that we need to exercise regularly, as positive effects on telomeres are detected more consistently if we exercise at least three times a week. And then there is our diet. As always, our diet can also impact our telomeres. Longer telomeres are associated with the consumption of fruits, dairy products, nuts, legumes and seaweed. What is quite amazing is that also the consumption of coffee is associated with longer telomeres. So you can treat yourself and just go to a Starbucks or I don't know. But there's also something else we haven't touched so far which is important when it comes to aging and living longer. And that is to live healthy and delay age-related diseases. As we get older, the risk to suffer from cancer increases. One in two men and one in three women in the United States receive a cancer diagnosis by the age of 80. The thing is that 4 out of 10 cancer cases could be completely avoided. People just have to make the right choices. For example, we can lower the risk to suffer from cancer by avoiding smoking, and drinking little to no alcohol. Then we can also protect ourselves from UV light and exercise. And also eating healthy and avoiding become overweight helps. This is something all of us can do. And again, if we did, we wouldn't have 4 out of 10 cancer cases, meaning that millions of people would not have cancer. Well, that got deep. Aging is a complex process, which seems inevitable. We've seen that aging disturbs the gene activity in our cells, makes our telomeres shorter and leads to the accumulation of old cells which have lost their function. At the same time, the risk of cancer rises more and more. But as we've seen, it doesn't need to be like that. Scientists show more and more evidence that we can slow down and even reverse aging. And there are things also we can do. So whatever you aim to do today, maybe think about the telomeres and take a small break. Although we uncover more and more aspects of aging, there is still a lot we can learn. Part 4 And with that a question to you, what do you do in order to reduce your stress? And with that I hope that you liked this video and if so feel free to like it and subscribe or don't do it, it's a free country as always. And with that, I'll see ya! If you're interested in other aspects of aging or how we can slow down aging, you might like the other two parts of the series. 